Minnow Kashep. Good morning. Niki Wed in Kwe, Dishnikas, Mishika Dodem, Ms. Wazagin Donchaba, Jimmy Gwetch, Wabanong, Jawanong, the Pingish Muk, Giwed Nung, Jimmy Gwetch, Shkakame Kwe, Minawa, Gisham Nado. Ni, ah, Bimose, Ni, ah, Canada. To come and talk, Giget, about Mishkike. I offered my prayers to the ones of this land. I also offered my thanks for having this invite to be invited to this ICCS conference. It is with uh, my pleasure, great honor to be here. Um, <clears throat> In seeing the similarities in our, in our teaching methods and what we learn from our elders, what we learn from the land, these are important for our people because the way of life that we're living right now is not working for us. So we have to find what will work for us. When we go back to our wisdom teachings, those are the wisdom teachings of the land. We go back to the land and we know that the land has lots to offer. And we see that and we feel that. And when we feel that in the way the sun comes out, we feel that when the winds come. We feel that at night when we see the stars or we see the full moon. In my teachings, the sun, the stars, the moon, they are our relatives. And we acknowledge them as our relatives. The Earth Mother, we all call her the Earth Mother. So we recognize her as our mother. And we have that eternal relationship with our mother. We also have that eternal relationship with the stars. Sometimes we do, we put, we design our clothes after the stars, after the moon, after the sun, because they all represent our relatives. Those are our relatives. Those are our mother, our father, our grandfathers, our grandmothers, our brothers and our sisters. So when we do ceremony, and even before we start our ceremony, we make an offering, we make our, our, our sacred tobacco. It takes a long time to make our sacred tobacco. And when we make our sacred tobacco, that is the gift that we're giving to our mother. We live in her territory. We think this is our territory. We live in her territory. How big is that water? How big is the land? How big are those mountains? How big are those trees? We live in their territory. As human beings, we mark it as our territory. But it's their territory. It belongs to our relatives. When we do our ceremonies back home, we honor the four directions. Maybe here you have the four directions. You would have that here too, those four directions. You see that in that mandala that the monks have made. There are the four directions. And when you see that, you know that there are more that is included in those directions. Four plus four plus four, and it continues on like that. So it's really important that we understand that. And we have to put that together. 
when we start to put that together in our mind, in our spirituality, we say, no, this is how we do it over here, this is how we do it over here, this is how we do it over there. But it's not working. So we come to, together at a conference like this, and we talk and we share those things. We share those things because we're thinking about the next generations that are yet to come. Your mothers and your grandmothers, they provided the best that they could. The woman in our teachings as, as Nishnabe people, the women are the center of the home. With the woman being the center of the home, everything revolves around her. Everything. She's the one who cooks, she cleans, she irons your clothes, she provides the nurturing that the men need. She provides all that. And those are teachings that are passed down from generation upon generation from the woman. And where this woman gets her teachings, she gets that from the earth. The earth, she provides the food. She provides the tools that you need. She provides the love that you need as well. And you feel that if you were to go and just take your shoes off and stand on the ground, put your feet down there, take your shoes off. We as people, we forgot about that, that connection to the earth. My people, we wear our moccasins. It's right connection to the earth. It keeps you connected, it keeps you grounded, so you're not all confused all the time. And we get confused all the time, because we're too busy, 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 busy. We get too busy with our businesses, we get too busy for ourselves. So we have to go back to our mother and we have to learn to love ourselves. <clears throat> when we learn how to love ourselves, then we learn how to love our people. Then we learn how to take care of our people. So we have to do that for ourselves. We are the most important person. If something happened to you tomorrow, who's going to take care of your family? So we take care of ourselves. We learn to love ourselves. In my community, balance. We strive for balance. Balance is male and female. We don't separate that balance between male and female. We don't say that this is a man's job or this is a woman's job. We do it together. And that's balance. So you're looking at that balance. And that balance, it helps with your grandkids. Because we all have grandkids that are here. And we're looking for that balance. So we teach that to our kids. We teach that to our grandkids. Being a woman it is very, very hard in today's society. Being a woman, we have to stand up with so much problems, with so much abuse. Being a medicine woman, and it's not, uh, it's not common out there to be a medicine woman. So there are a lot, a lot of barriers that come into place when it comes to being a healer, a medicine woman. People don't think like that no more. We forget about our grandmothers and we forget about our woman healers. We forget about those things. When we start to acknowledge our woman, when we start to acknowledge our healers, because our women are our healers, 
When you go home late at night and your wife, she massages your shoulders or she gets your water ready for your feet. She's taking care of you. She's nurturing you. She's giving you that love that you need. And these things are important because it's that balance. The man, he goes, he becomes that warrior. Men become those warriors when they can understand that balance. So when they start to understand that balance, the warrior that is on the inside, they learn how to light that fire. Men have to learn how to light a fire. You have to actually go out and have to learn how to light a fire. That's what it's like in my, in my territory. Men have to actually go out and learn how to light a fire. And when they do that, they use what is there. They can know that they're going to take care of the woman and they're going to provide for their family. So they become those warriors. And we start to acknowledge those warriors because they're taking care of the women and children and grandmothers. In the center of the earth is fire. There is eternal fire in the center of the earth. When we are born, the heart, that's your fire. When that fire is lit on the inside with men and women, that's your eternal fire on the inside. Sometimes when you get sick, your fire goes down. And when your fire goes down, you have a really hard time. So this is where we use our medicines to keep that fire going, to keep that fire all the time going in here. So you share that with your sons and your grandsons. And your, and your granddaughters. So that fire is always lit. In my teachings, we have what we call the thunderbird. In your teachings, you have big birds that fly in the skies. And in my teachings, this thunderbird, he comes and he lights that fire. So when you see the lightning, what happens when you see the lightning? It lights fire. It lights fire. And when it's starting to do that, and you're seeing, going to see a lot of fire. And what it's telling you is, men, you need to wake up. You need to light your fire. And when you see the signs from our mother, our mother will give us those signs. If you notice here at the conference, we're talking here and way back, you could hear all the crows talking. They're having counsel too. And they're saying, yes, the people are meeting and talking. So you go out there and you hear those crows. And in the morning when you come and we're doing the ceremonies, you hear those birds that are singing. And they're telling you, they're saying, you're doing your ceremonies. What you're doing is right. They are acknowledging them. They are acknowledging us. Because we're in their territory. And they're saying, you're doing good work now. We look at the waters. The water is everywhere. In my teachings, the water is woman. Woman represents the waters. You cannot survive without having water for 8, 10, 12 days. You get weaker and weaker and weaker. And when you get weaker, you need that water. Water is your blood on the inside. So when women pray, they hold that water up and they're praying to the Creator. They're praying to the Creator. Bless this water 
So it's good water for our people. Bless this water that's good water for the land. Bless this water, it's good water for our babies. In my teachings, there are four sacred waters. <clears throat> the first sacred water is when the mother is carrying the child. That water is very sacred when she's carrying her child. That child lives in that water for nine months. That's sacred water. The second sacred water is our rivers. When our rivers are moving, they're carrying the life force of Mother Earth, the rivers. They're always, there's good, clean water, those rivers because they're always moving, they're always clearing. And when you drink that first water, it makes you feel good. That's life. The third sacred water is when the rains come. When it starts raining, that's the sacred water that comes in from the thunderbirds. They're telling you that it's time for the food to start growing. It's all these things that are really important to the people. So when the rains come, sometimes the rains will be a little bit harsh. And that brings change. So we go with that change. And when we go with that change, we're able to make that adaptation for our children and our grandkids. The fourth sacred water are tears. When, when you cry, those are sacred. When you see a mother crying for her son who has gone to war or has died, that's her medicine. That's her sacred water. When you see a man crying, he's healing himself on the inside. And, and men come in contact with the female side of themselves. And that's that water. Water is important to us. So when we can go out and sit on the land and we think about our family, and we think about our people, and we think about our land. And sometimes we cry. Men, they cry. They have to heal themselves. And when they start healing themselves, they come in contact with the woman female that's on the inside of themselves. In our teachings, as Nishnabe people, we have the male and the female. You have those teachings too. You have the male and the female on the inside. <clears throat> and those teachings are really important. When the male side becomes too strong, the female side has a hard time. And it's not until they pass or they start to get really sick and it's their time to go into the spirit world that they say, oh, I should have done this. I should have done that. I could have. But we end up saying, so creator, when we pass that doorway, we go on to the other side. We go to where it's beautiful. So when we're doing those ceremonies, when we're understanding that relationship, how important that water is. In my teachings, when we, when we put out our young people out fasting, they don't drink no water for four days. They don't eat no food for four days. And we instruct them on how to connect to our mother 
So they have to say lots of prayers to our mother, to the winds, to the sun, because that's our relatives. And we always believe that our relatives, the earth, is going to take care of us. We have to believe that. We get too stuck here in our mind. So the spiritual intentions, here, when we talk to the Creator, when we talk to those four directions, Naramo Shen Gajanado, Naramo Shen Gajanado, Ni Akwaze Ninwak Kwewuk, Creator, come and help us, Creator. Come and help us. We are sick and we are looking to get better. We want only the good things in life. And that is what is there for us. In our prophecies, in our prophecies, the people have fell asleep. All over the world, people fell asleep. We're still sleeping. And until we wake up and we talk to the mother, we talk to the sun, we talk to the moon, we talk to those winds because those animals are already telling us what you're doing is right. But we just have to pay attention. And we're not there yet because it's things that we are never grown up with because our parents fell asleep. So when we wake up, and we do, we are waking up because we're having a beautiful conference at ICCS. People are coming together and talking about these things. It's not working what's going on in the world. It's not working. Cultures come together. And they talk about healing. How can we heal the mother? How can we heal our people? When the Creator Gijem Nado, <clears throat> when he put first man, and you all have your creation stories. In my creation story, the red man, he was the last one to leave the Creator's side. Why was he the last one to leave the Creator's side? Because of that spiritual connection that he had to the Creator. And you can feel that here when you're talking to your Creator. You feel that spiritual connection here in the heart when you speak to your Creator and you know your Creator is going to look after you. You feel that. These things are important. And when they are very, very important to us, we create a vision. People, good, good, good people have visions for this world. Lots of good vision. So we come together and we talk about those visions. In my community, in my in Canada, they have what they call an inquiry into the missing and murdered Indigenous women. They have a national inquiry at the government level. So they're looking into the missing and murdered Indigenous women. So it's all over when it comes to our people. The stories, we have the same stories as you do when it comes to our people. But we have to recover. So we are recovering through our ceremonies. We have to go back and we have to understand that water and we have to understand that fire. They, they work together, they create balance. 
That's balance. In our, in our communities, the grandmothers, the grandmothers have a sacred space. We have created a sacred space for the grandmothers. We have created a sacred space for our grandfathers. And we go and we sit and we talk to our grandmothers. And we ask them what it was like. They have all that lived experience for at least 85, 100 years. They know already what it's like. Us, we're still the babies. We're still trying to figure it out. <laughs> Same thing with our grandfathers. We go and talk to our grandfathers. We have counsel with them because we recognize them for their wisdom. So when I talk about the wisdom teachings, it is from those elders that I sat with, I learned from. I got the wisdom teachings from them. When you come to that age, you will be wise. And you want to be wise because you understand what this life is all about. You understand where we're going. Young people are saying this is not working. And they're saying that. And we need to listen to them as well. We need to hear them. So when we're looking at the woman, when we're looking at divinity, we all have that on the inside of ourselves. When, when our heart is broken, you know what? I, I am a healer, I go all over the place. Lots of men are dying with broken hearts. Lots of men have stroke because their blood is not moving through their body. Lots of men are suffering here and here. They got to connect it, they got to get it together. Your heart and your mind, connecting that together. It's only what? Not a very far distance to go. So our medicines, they help. Because in our creation stories, the Creator, when He made man, He made man from the sand. He made man from the earth. Everything that is in the earth is in you. The water, the sand, the bones, everything. So Creator made you like that. So when we become sick, all our medicines are there. All of our medicines are there to help us to get better. Everything, every person, everybody from different territories, from different countries, they have their medicines that will help them to get better. That's why the Creator, when He made the different countries all over the world, He made medicine to keep the people happy and healthy. He made that medicine for the people. But we just have to slowly wake up and pay attention to that. Once we do that, once we start to wake up and pay attention to that, our mother, she gives us more. And we get from our mother what it is that she gives us. Our waters. Do you drink lots of water? Or lots of palm? Lots of juice? Everything that we take, everything that we eat has an adverse effect on our body. 
spirituality, different spirituality practices with respect for the different practices of spirituality. We honor and respect those different practices of spirituality. How do you practice your spirituality when you talk to your creator? Then you talk to the creator. Creator is already here on the inside. You talk to the creator. In our practices, in our ceremonies, we have sacred food. We have sacred water. We have sacred medicine and we have our berries. Those are the four first things that we give to the spirits. We don't eat, we don't drink anything until the spirits eat first. Everything is cooked. Everything that is given to the spirits. And we know because they're sacred. So that's what that's why we do those things. It's because they're very, very sacred. And we do that to the Creator. We make a special plate for the Creator as well. We honor the Creator in what the Creator has provided. Creator is universal. Creator is the universe. When we look up into the scar, into the stars, that's a really big place. And we're only about this small. <laughs> But we got to get it together. So when we're going back to our ceremonies, in, in my language, we have I, you, them, and us. There's no female gender in my language. There's no male or female. We recognize them as Kwe Wuk and Nen Wuk. That is the man, the responsibilities of the man, the responsibilities of the woman. So it's us, I, them. We always talk about we. We're going to work for the people, we. So we're not talking about ourselves. Only when we're talking to the Creator, Gishemnado. Creator, this is I. And we recognize ourselves. I am your daughter, Creator. I am your son, Creator. And we start to recognize and we start to understand that spiritual do doorway, that spiritual direction that we're starting to look for. When we fall out of balance, and we start using our medicines. Our people are suffering with diseases. When the Europeans first come, we didn't have diseases. We had sicknesses, but they didn't have any names. There was no name for sickness. We just knew, oh, you're sick. Oh, quizze, you're sick. So now we give a name to our diseases, arthritis, Arthur, we could call him, <laughs> cancer, diabetes, depression, anxiety. You know, the majority of people, male and female, suffer depression, and they don't even know it. So if you can imagine communities where people are depressed, that's depression. So the sicknesses, we use our medicines and we use our ceremonies when it comes to the changing of the seasons. In my community, we do our ceremonies with the changing of the seasons. When it's fall time, 
we do a ceremony. When it's winter time, we do a ceremony. Springtime, we do a ceremony. And summertime, we do a ceremony. And it's at that time during the spring and the fall that we put our young people out to fast. So when they're out fasting, they're learning about themselves. They're learning about who they are and what their purpose in life is. Because we have to know what our purpose in life is. Everybody has to have that purpose. So we pay attention to our Mother Earth. We pay attention to the winds. We pay attention to those animals. And we thank them. Thank you for coming and showing us these things. Because they are the ones who are telling us we're going to acknowledge you for the work that you do. So we have to acknowledge ourselves. So everything that we need is out there. Everything that we are looking for. Take your shoes off after and just go stand on the land. Feel the earth. Feel your mother. And you'll start to pick up on a lot of the vibrations. So I'm going to leave this open for questions. If you have any questions or comments, please go ahead. Everybody wants a pass? <laughs> Go ahead. I just would like to know about the concept of what you always said, that there's no man and man. What is the reason? The reason is it's because balance. People are always looking for balance in their lifetime. When, when, you're, when you are balanced in who you are, you have harmony in your life. So people are looking for harmony, they're looking for balance. So we have our seven grandfather teachings. It's like the seven stars up, the seven sisters, the seven grand. We have those seven grandfather teachings. And we have to live by those teachings to maintain balance. That's love, kindness, wisdom, sharing, humility, bravery, courage. In our teachings, the children, the child is already born with those teachings. The child is already born. As parents, as grandparents, it's our responsibility to help them to maintain those seven teachings. It's our responsibility. So I want to thank you for allowing me to come and present. Um, I'll be walking around, so if you want to sit and talk, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, I want to say miigwech, chmiigwech. That's how we say that in my language, for allowing ICCS to uh, provide this opportunity. Chmiigwech. <laughs>